Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's Adobe XD tutorial, we're going to be playing around with component states. We're going to be creating this app menu and prototyping it all using Adobe XD. By the end of this video, I hope you have a good understanding of what component states can do and how you can use them in your own designs. There's a lot of these app menu variations on Dribbble, so I decided to go into the prototype tab and utilize component states and see what I could come up with, and that led to today's tutorial. So let's go ahead and take a look at the project file for this video. So like in all of my tutorials, I like to include a project file. For this one, it might not be necessary for you to download, but if you would like it, I will have it in the description. I'm gonna have the colors, character styles, and components in there for you so you don't have to find them. These, I believe, are from Feather Icons. And we're going to be using the Brandon Gortesque font, and this is from Adobe Fonts. We are going to be utilizing a iPhone 11 artboard, 414 by 896. And we're going to be using this even though we're only going to be designing the app menu at the bottom, just so when we go to the live preview, it will look like it's actually on a phone. So again, that is the project file. It will get you set up for the start of this tutorial, and it will be linked down in the description. So to get started, let's go ahead and create our background rectangle. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and just create a rectangle here. We're going to size this to 110 by 414 to match the artboard width. We'll touch that to the bottom. I'm gonna be removing the border and I'm gonna set a drop shadow. And here I already have a swatch set. This is at the color of 617384, that is the hex code, with the opacity set to 15%. Now we're not gonna be able to see that yet because we have to play around with the X, Y, and blur. So on the Y, I'm gonna drop that down to 15 pixels, and then I'm gonna bump up the blur to 40 just so we get that subtle highlight above the menu there. If we zoom in, we're going to have four icons placed on this. So I'm just going to drag those out now. This is a home icon, and I'm gonna center this inside of this rectangle for now and put it about 50 from the left side edge of our artboard. Going all the way to the right, we're gonna place our next icon. This is the settings icon. Center it up again, and 50 from the right side of the artboard. Next, I have a feed icon. I'm just going to put that one about 73 pixels from the right of the home. And for the save, we're gonna put that 73 pixels to the left of our settings menu. So we have about 73 pixels in between all of these with 50 on the edge. Once we have all those, I'm just going to drag and grab all of them, hold shift and select the rectangle in the background to deselect it. And I'm going to make sure these are centered. And from here, I'm gonna hold shift and press up arrow on my keyboard to move that 10 pixels from the center. So we have 33 spacing on the top and 53 on the bottom. If you're using the project file, all these are already set to the gray color we're gonna be using. But if not, the color code is BCC4CC. What we need to do next is add in text to the right of each one of these icons that's going to be grouped with it later. So let's go ahead and grab the type tool with T on the keyboard and I'm going to type out home. We're going to set that to brand and grotesque 17 point font, regular weight. We're going to make sure it's aligned to the left. For now, I'm going to set this to black just so we can see it. And we're going to center this up with all the icons and put it 12 pixels from the right of its own icon. So I'm gonna hold Alt now and drag out a duplicate and change the text. So now I have feed, repeat that process, holding Alt, saved, and lastly, settings. Once we have that, I'm just gonna click and drag to select all of them, again, holding Shift and select that background. We'll deselect it, and I'm going to make sure they're all centered and check our spacing one more time. We're good to go. From here, let's swap over to the layers panel. So let's grab the home text and the icon, group it together, and here in the layers panel, we'll just call this home. We're gonna repeat that for all of the icons. Once I have all of these in groups, we no longer need to see the text for any of them because we already have this aligned. So I'm going to go in, double click until I get to each one of the text, change them to a fill of white, just like that. The next thing I'm going to do is create the rectangle that's going to be going behind each one of these icons. So we'll just drag out a rectangle and I'm going to set this to 122 wide by 44 high. For the border radius, I'm just going to drag that in all the way until it's rounded, remove the border, and I'm going to set that to the purple color we're using, which the color code is 
5B37B7. I'm going to send this all the way to the back of the layers. So command shift left square and bracket key. And then I'm going to bring it forward by one with command right square bracket key. Then I'm going to center this up to that home grouping. And then we're going to set the icon to a border of white. So now we have to shift the icons around to make sure they look good when each of these states are active. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna double click until I have this icon selected. Then if I hold Alt on the keyboard and I hover over this settings icon, you'll see that we have 73 spacing. We wanna make that 55. So to do that, I'm gonna use my arrow keys. So I'm gonna go over in 10 pixel increments with the Shift key held down as well, so 10, 20. So now we're at 53, and if I backtrack two pixels, we are now at 55 spacing. Just to double check, there we are. And we need to do the same for this. So we should be at about 90, yep. So here we go. That is 80, 70, 60, and then we'll go one, two, three, four, five. And now we have 55 spacing. So that's going to align all of these icons ready for the default state of this component. One final thing we need to do here is select each one of the texts inside of the groupings that are not highlighted by that rectangle. And we need to lower the opacity on that text to 0% so that when we're sliding things around, they're not visible. With that, we can select everything by just clicking and dragging, go up to the top right of the properties inspector and under component, we need to select the plus icon and that will create a new component. We're gonna call this menu and we need a state for each one of our other icons. So our default state will be for home. So we need to add three more. So we'll just click the plus, new state, feed, saved, and settings. So now we can set each one of these states. So we're gonna select feed, and we're gonna double click until we grab that rectangle, and we'll slide it over until it's centered behind that grouping. Change the text to 100% opacity, grab that border on the icon, change it to white, and then over here, we can turn the text down to zero for the home, and grab the home icon, and set it back to our gray border. From here, we need to shift this whole thing over till there's 55 pixels in between this icon and this one. So I'm gonna select the home icon, hold Alt, and we have 108 spacing. So I'm just going to slide that over and then move the rectangle behind it. We'll double check the spacing on that and it's at 55. So this is the position we want for the feed. Then we're gonna select the component and go to the saved state, and we'll adjust that as well. Again, dragging the rectangle behind, change the opacity, the color of the icon, don't forget to hide the text of the home, and change it back to a gray icon. And now for this one, we're going to have to slide this icon back over, and then we'll have to adjust this icon next as well. So just to double check that, I have 55 spacing here and 55 spacing to the next icon. So that is the save state done. And finally, I'm gonna to have to readjust this for the setting state as well. And so once I have that, now I have each state selected. So it's just a little bit tricky of trying to get everything perfectly aligned just so it looks good in the design as you're shifting through each one of these states. So I'm gonna make sure this is set to the default state and then we're going to head over to the prototype tab. So here, this is gonna be repetitive as well. For each one of the icons, you're going to have to set up the tap interaction. So I'm going to grab the grouping, hit the plus icon, Make sure it is set to tap. We're going to auto animate, ease out, and we'll set this to 0.6 seconds. For the destination, you wanna make sure you choose the correct state. So for this icon, we're gonna to go to the feed. We'll grab this one, do the same process, make sure it goes to saved. And for this one, we'll make sure it goes to settings. So each one of those is set. 
Now we're not done yet. We have to select the entire component, switch over to the feed, and from here we need to do the same process. So we need to add a tap interaction with auto animate and make sure we set the correct destination for each one of these. So now that I've set all of those, I'm going to grab the component, go to the saved, and repeat that one more time. Again, setting each one to the correct state. And finally, we'll do that for the settings. The home needs to go to the default state. The feed needs to go to the feed. And finally, the saved needs to go to the saved. Selecting the entire component, we'll go back to the default state. We'll hit the live preview. When we select one of the icons, you'll see that the rectangle shifts over and highlights each one. And no matter which one you have selected, it will jump to the correct icon. So that's gonna do it for today's tutorial. That is how you prototype this menu. And I just wanna show you one more thing. You can take this even further and add in some auto animation with the rest of your design. So here I've just added in these blank cards sliding in as I select the feed, just as an example. So we've just scratched the surface of components. There is so much more interactivity and animation that you can add to this. So I will definitely be making more tutorials on component states. If you guys have any suggestions or ideas, leave them down in the comments below with any questions you may have through this tutorial. With all that said, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more design-related content. I upload every Tuesday and Thursday, so make sure you have that notification bell on so you don't miss a video. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.